Welcome to uh, Three Guys Off Grid, and we're going to continue our series on the vermicomposting using red wigglers and other red worms. Uh, today we're going to be taking our bin that we prepped for the outdoors um, and actually putting it outdoors now that the last freeze is done. Uh, it's going to be nice and warm for the next few weeks and for the rest of the summer. So how we prepped this was we used a bunch of just like root balls and other stuff that we were just tossing and then filled it with just shredded paper and cardboard about three weeks ago. So we filled it with uh, paper and all kinds of shredded stuff and uh, prepped it, but then we had another week of freeze. And so it ended up actually just sitting out here for a couple weeks without us like actually putting worms in it. And then I noticed one day after a rain, when I was digging down, the natural earthworms have already come up and are just, and it's just full of worms already. They've come up and just made a home out of it because the worms like the paper, nothing else really likes to be in paper. There aren't any flies or mites or anything like that. Um, and so it's perfect. The whole point of this outdoor bed is so that we can go horizontal along this entire wall. And so as we add to the pile, it'll just keep going uh, further and further down and the worms eggs will be laid and they'll hatch out in a couple weeks they eat the little bits that were left behind because the adults have moved on and then as they all hatch out they'll move along and so on and so on so then after about a month month and a half you'll start getting uh, worm castings that don't have any eggs or baby worms in them and they've all kind of moved along and we can do this all year long and then when we get to the end we can dig this up and harvest the good vermo or the composted uh, worm castings and then start putting scraps and stuff uh, back the opposite direction. And we have people every single day trying to buy worm castings from us. We, I mean, people sell it by like the little tiny bag and they sprinkle it on their like plants, their potted plants or their garden. And it's, it just supercharges a bunch of nutrients and living beneficial bacteria into their soil. Um, instead of using fertilizer and that's the goal and it's a better way of composting that worms also break down medications antibiotics um, all really? kinds of chemicals yeah Gosh. yeah if you feed them mind blown I don't even I need like a little emoji little thing that <laughs> <laughs> we'll make, we'll make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah they'll break down over 90% of antibiotics so as you guys all saw in the, the last one that we did. Um, what <laughs> we, happened in that one? <laughs> yeah, and so I accidentally dumped the brand new one that I was trying to keep mite free <laughs> into the bin that we were going to do outdoors and then put it back in real quick <laughs> right when I realized it was the wrong bucket I was dumping. And uh, it turns out I have had the indoor bin um, inside and there's no mites, uh, shockingly. So that actually there's no worked mites. Out. <laughs> but this is the outdoor bin that we prepped. Um, I've had it inside the greenhouse and it's been about 80 degrees and remember how we put all the we put all this paper cardboard packaging and then leaves in here it's only been a few weeks and this is what it is just full of worms and compost I mean and, and yeah there's a banana I put in yesterday <laughs> um, and so they're just going at it and so there's a, oh yeah, I put some aloe vera in this morning. But, so we're gonna move this into here. And we started doing all of, uh, when I did put live material in here, like or cut plants and stuff, I started here. That, and then we'll add going that direction. So we're gonna start this kind of right here. So we're gonna pull all this back. And this thing got heavy from being just paper. And then I've just put down biodegradable stuff to keep the plants down. Yeah, go for it. So, basically just scooch it all forward. Enough that all this can fit in here. Man, look at all these worms. That's Holy. crazy. Got one right here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my fish would Whoa, love this. That That's oh, a gray worm. What kind is that? 
It doesn't have the... He's nauseous. He <laughs> lost all its color. <laughs> no, baby. Man, that's crazy. <laughs> oh, no. Mine's normally colored. Look at... This is just crazy. It just... Take this is a way to harvest, worms on worms right? on worms. This is a way to harvest earthworms just doing the paper in a pile on the ground. Mm. Or, and this was leaves. Um, yeah, so they've already done that just in nature. But we want the red wigglers because these worms will eat about a tenth of their body weight every day. And they just kind of go up, eat, go down, leave. They don't eat everything. Red Wigglers will eat absolutely everything and leave behind nothing but worm castings. And they eat, yeah, ten times as much per pound of worms. Oh my God, Levi, you're so strong! Ah. Come on out there, pretty little lady. Come on out there. Wow, that's Dude. crazy. Dude. <laughs> no more leaves or paper. Dude, yeah. Look at this. We gotta do a side. Dude, get in on this. Look at this. Look at that. It's pretty moist down there. Yeah. Favorite. That that is perfect. Tons of tons of wriggling wet ones. And I've just been really winging it. I've never dug to the bottom of that bag. And oh, that is right. that's everything I wanted. Look at that. And so yeah, we have a couple different varieties of red worms in here. Yeah, see here's these little guys. And certain ones like different stuff. And so that's where the red mix can be good. Um, yeah, depending on what you feed them. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and just... Honestly, there's so much, I didn't expect that much. And so, okay, so then... Let's go ahead and put the band, you want to pull some of that back? Alright, so we're going to make a little hole here. And then we just cut this, uh, these plants out of the garden. Uh, just edible, leafy greens without any stems. Yeah, just throw a, like half of it in there. Okay, then we'll just layer it a bit so the worms can go through and then put more. Okay, and then just probably the rest of it. Just check it on there. Perfect. Yep. And then... Uh, the worms like this this wet moisture, so. <laughs> Ben's a worm. <laughs> I eat my body weight every day. <laughs> <laughs> what else do you mean? In, in, in hot sauce. <laughs> and talk about hot sauce. That is a fact. <laughs> this is a fact. Give it. A oh no. So what about what about like ink ink and all that stuff that's in your paper? Does that affect your your the worms at all? Like stuff like this? Yeah. Um, it's not ideal for like vegetation. Like if you're gonna solely use this for certain plants that like I don't know, you just want to have like absolutely organic. Obviously, yeah, there is some stuff in there. Yeah. If you're just uh, adding like dirt for you know like this whole place was a scrapyard. Right. And so at this point we're making layers of just New. soil. Yeah. And so this will just eat everything. Um, uh, question. Yeah. So for a compost this size, what would this be good for? Like a family of like four, five, six, a big bigger family, or what is this more designed to support in terms of like an everyday home? Okay. Yeah, that's a great question. So the cool thing about worm bins, indoor or outdoor, depending on how much you're feeding them, whether you're giving it like a large yard of like the grass clippings or just your food waste, the worms will actually lay eggs according to how much food is constantly available. So if you're only giving, and each pound of worms eats a pound of food or whatever. So just keep that in mind. So if you've got, you know, say right now, I started with a pound, we probably have about five pounds of worms in here. So we can add about five pounds of leafy greens, paper, cardboard, oh, that's, whatever. That's a really good uh, like rule of thumb. And if you want to keep it super active and you're kind of lacking on what you'd normally have, uh -huh. you can substitute with dried leaves or oh, cardboard yeah. or whatever. And if you just happen to have a lot of uh, kitchen waste, you could hold off on the cardboard and stuff um, oh, yeah. because you, you want them to eat that quickly so it doesn't mold. Okay. 
Yeah. So what happens if it, it starts molding? Is that something you don't want to give to the worms? Um, or would that cause like some fun fungus in the soil that you don't want? Or? Outdoors, it's going to be fine. Indoors, it's, the, it's going to start smelling. Um, me personally, I'll put moldy stuff just right on top and let it dry out. Oh. And then I'll bury it okay. uh, like a couple days later and they'll eat it. Um, but you don't really want a lot of moldy stuff because if you just like suffocate them with stuff that's really moldy or really just nasty, sometimes they will actually start to leave the area. But as you can see, like the, the worms are going to stay in here because even with us putting this and prepping a perfect like worm little habitat, it drew the worms from the ground to our bed before we even put worms in it. So what you're saying is we got this. We got roly polies. Yep. Wait, Fun. that's not supposed to be in there. Oh yes, it is. <laughs> Fun fact of the day. You ready? Yeah. Roly polies are the only crustacean that lives on land. They don't pee. Evolution. And they drink from their butts and their mouth. <laughs> Google it. So what you're saying is we have a lot in common. Say that last part again, Levi. I don't think our viewers heard you. <laughs> that they drink from their mouths and their butts and they don't pee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's always going to be funny. <laughs> all right. So now that we got all the dirt on here, um, we want to do the same thing like, like we did uh, indoors or when we're making our bins. They don't like the light and we need a layer to keep the moisture in. So that's where I just shredded up every little bit of cardboard, paper, bills, especially. Uh, <laughs> I gave bill. him my bills. <laughs> Usually bills. This is our uh, a day and a half of bills. <laughs> <laughs> We've just been saving so much money since we got off Yeah, there. you can shred it. Okay, so we this just haven't been paying them. <laughs> <laughs> this will uh, keep some of the... <laughs> yeah. This will keep the heat out from the sun, gives them shade so they'll eat stuff all the way up to the top, um, and it keeps the moisture in. So this is great, and when it's shredded like this, it doesn't blow away. Now, it doesn't blow away when it's shredded. Is there gonna be, be moisture on top for it to kind of stay there? No, um, that's why we're doing it against this. Oh, by the way, I should mention, this is not a railroad tie. It does not have any creosote. This is organic uh, tree matter with a plant-based glue that's um, not toxic. And then our bed is also facing east. So when the hottest sun is here, they'll be in the shade. And then all the rain that comes from the, the parking lot up here goes uh, through this bioswale, which is full of mulch and gra it's gravel and mulch. And then flash floods come and sink and just absorb into it instead of running off and then it slowly releases the water out filtered water basically through here it's a little slow release action yeah and then once we get once this bed's long the water will come through the 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 worm castings and the water will continue in through our greenhouse and our gardens so we're fertilizing our gardens by putting this here by the bioswale Beautiful. Part of the runoff. So beautiful. Gorgeous. Gorgeous, George. So what are the next steps here for our vermicomposting? So the next steps really is everyone that gardens here and grows stuff or when we pull up edible plants or you know like just just about anything we'll just keep adding to the edge and as we just keep adding and building up we'll let it get you know about this big and then just keep adding to the side as it goes and the worms will just multiply and multiply and multiply uh, to handle what we give them and until it's just a, it's its own machine just moving right along okay guys that uh that about wraps up part two of our vermicomposting video ben and levi did a good job explaining everything um, next time part three and beyond what we're going to do is expand on this patch right here and just kind of go down the bed that's going to be throughout the year so that's gonna you're going to need to like and subscribe and follow us throughout the year uh, next week possibly the week after what we're going to do is a mealworm uh, setup we're going to start with mealworm bins uh, everything from beetles to larva to pupa to the mealworm we're going to talk about their stages we're going to show you everything and then we might even have some fun with them and feed them to some fish make sure you guys give us a like and subscribe and stay tuned yeah.